So following the video on the Ridga release today, uh, I got some comments with regards to the fact that we're drilling a hole right here to enlarge uh, this diameter inside the housing to allow the gear to be pressed from the back. And we need to allow these teeth to go through the body. So obviously we need to have more clearance in there. And that clearance, the uh, what it's going to do is basically remove some material that was there to constrain the filament better in its path between the gears. So when using pretty flexible filament, we might have some filament deciding to get wrapped around the gear. And um, this is not good. So I did print some flexible filament with this configuration without any issue, but I could see uh, the concern that some have. So what I'd like to propose is to have to maintain the constraint that we had. So pretty, a lot of material wrapping around the gear and all that material is making sure the filament gets grabbed by the hop gear. So how to press the gear from the back without interfering with those teeth against the body? Well, here's the answer. What if we have this slot in here that would allow to pass through the teeth and then you lock it into position with the help of the bearings? This extra space over here has no impact whatsoever. I made sure to increase a bit the structural integrity of the body. So added some material right here. Okay, so the way this would fit is simply we would slide the shaft inside that new housing and we would then just press it against where it needs to sit and we will have it right where we need and then secure this with the cover and the bearings. So as a small walk around of this new V165 Hextradort a few things to notice. The first one important to notice is that you're going to need some M3, I'm sorry, M2.5 by 8 millimeter long screws with the, uh, they call them ultra low heads. And these ultra low heads allow us to get more material to be grabbed over here for better attachment of the hot end. And obviously we need to clear the gear right here and over here the dowel pin. So we're kind of limited limited with the amount of, uh, of meat we can uh, sandwich over there. So using ultra low head allows us to get more, uh, a firmer grip on the hot end. Um, another area of change is obviously the lever over here on which I've put more meat on the arm over here to avoid it from binding under load. And uh, that was something I was observing especially when using enclosure uh, after a while my arm wouldn't would be bent and therefore not providing the uh the right amount of pressure on the idler on the filament i made sure that i keep that i kept the uh, thickness over here uh where the screw the thumb screw pushes as thin as possible so we maintain um some grip it's easy to install and uh, reach the M3 nut right here. So that being said, let's take them out of the way. The internal remains pretty much the same. Um, if I simply focus on the body, we talked about that notch over here for the installation and keeping the filament containment path right here. Um, pretty much it so just a few curves right here to smoothen things out give it uh, some better better looking I know it's a it's a bulky part uh, but the way I think we should print it is using um, not so heavy infill quite heavy quite thick walls and tops and bottoms but I think we could keep the uh, the infill as low as possible to keep the weight down the ratio rigidity versus weight should shouldn't be pretty should be pretty good. Now the cover obviously needed to match this new pattern of the hole, so I had to stretch it. Thought it looked weird a bit, but it's not bad. I just made it a bit more square, a bit more rough, and a bit more meat. So 
yeah, it overall it's a bulkier unit. Um, I know we want to keep the weight down, but we have to be, um, we have to keep a good control. And those extruders don't, you remember, an extruder can push like four, five, six kilograms of force on the filament. And this force is generated by those two gears. So this body better be quite rigid to support that and not try to twist itself apart or, or just split in two. Uh, I, I, you could observe when we were using some gears with wobbling, you could observe the entire body of the extruder just opening up and closing back uh, following the, uh, the gear variation in uh, diameter. So I overall, I, I made it a bit bulkier so we have a better control on the gears and we try to keep them straight uh, to one another, including with the lever, having better control with the lever uh, on the idler. So yeah, that's it. A printed extruder. Uh, I know we're in er an era right now looking at all metal extruders with the VZ uh, extruder at low, which is a fantastic extruder, but I thought I would just re re-energize this configuration for people, for those of you running it. Um, I still think it's a decent, uh, decent piece of hardware. And uh, especially if you have uh, everything that goes around it, then if it works, it works. So right now the release plan is to um, update. Well, obviously I have, uh, so there's the Dragon and the Rapido. So are gonna be taken care of by this, this guy over here. So the bill of material, the SDLs, uh, the step files, I have to figure out. So I think I'm going to release a step file just for this, what you see on the screen right here. And uh, a step file. We do have step files right now for each carriages. So plug this in the carriage and you should be fine. Same height of Z. Uh, Z end stop, BL touch, uh, cooling duct and whatsoever. Um, so that remains. So E3D is almost done. I'll need to incorporate that slot that we I just did uh, tonight. And uh, Mosquito and Nova are probably going to have to wait a bit as I have another project on the burner. Um, but uh, let me know in the comments if there's anything uh, missing that uh, you'd like to see, uh, see uh, sooner than later. All right. See you soon. Happy printing.